It was still months before I, I, I you know, got back into sort of mental and, and, and whatever, emotional shape, you know. Yeah. I'm not in that great of physical shape, but I, you know, I'm, I'm in, I'm, everything else is, is I saw you sprint through more. the crowd last night, I had some moves. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> clamor. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't sprightly go over the barrier like I used to. Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemies in Conversation, and we're here today with the Nationals' Matt Berninger. Hi. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Uh, yeah, good. Welcome. Well, I mean, it's hard to feel anything down here. We're in Andrew's uh, bedroom, which is, <laughs> he just modeled this way. But we're actually in the bowels of Alexandra Palace. Um, did you know? I learned something today on the way down here. Where we are now. This used to be used as an internment camp during World War II. Oh no, really? Yeah. Wow. Do you believe in ghosts? I don't believe in ghosts, but I believe in the power of the belief in ghosts. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like, like, like the spirituality and all that. Same thing with God, you know, it's like, I don't really believe in it, but I believe in its, its power. But uh, it's kind of nice down here, it's peaceful. Yeah. I live in a, in, a, in a house that's 202 years old right now. Yeah. And I figured there must have been like 15 families. That, that If a baby was born there, they would have been in their 40s during the American Civil War. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can. I, it feels it feels like a good vibe. I like it. We are at Alexandra Palace because the National are playing two nights back to back, and uh, I think Aaron said from stage last night that you weren't going to repeat any songs. We're going to yeah, we're not going to repeat any songs. Um, and I mean, we could probably we have a lot of songs. We could probably play like a week without. Them, you know? <laughs> uh, and uh, but yeah, we've been we've been playing uh, a lot of really old stuff and stuff that we haven't played at all yet. So every night um, is is you know a disaster in in, <laughs> in, one, in one fun way or another. But yeah, it's been that has been a, a huge sort of uh, I don't know breaking out of a of a sort of and mostly it was me. I think before I used to like really want to stay on. Uh, a limited set list just because my capacity to, to memorize that many songs, you know, and then I, I stopped worrying about all that. And, and uh, you know, now it's kind of like it's, it's, it's much more fun every night to be splashing around in fresh waves that you hadn't, you know, water that you hadn't heard in a long time and try to like dive back into, into old songs. and. Uh, yeah, it's been it's really revitalized um, everybody in the band. But uh, I think for me, it was the kind of the hardest thing to to, to do. Um, uh, the rest have been trying to get me to to, to do bigger, longer set lists for a long time, and I yeah. just I was I was always uh, nervous about that. But not anymore. I don't. Know. Well, it's quite cool. This not repeating thing. I think I think I read Pearl Jam do it. But I think most notably, like Metallica did it recently, and someone sent me a text yesterday saying, "Yeah, the National are doing a Metallica." Yeah, well, how many nights did Metallica do those? Just two. Just two, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But have, have um, you come away with, with a sense of pride? I mean, do you feel new muscles working in your brain? Having <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the playing together and, and everything. And, I, and I've, I've been learning to how to just how to, how to do the, the, the show after show and the travel and all that stuff that everybody complains about, and I won't complain about it, but, but you know, but it's, it's uh, I can I shut down completely in between shows and like do as little as possible. I just kind of I kind of pull the curtains closed and 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 only really sort of come out of that like a little bit before showtime, you know. And, and that's the, that's the only way I can do it, you know. Yeah. If, if I'm trying to like live some sort of lifestyle on the road or you know take in the world, it's it's I, then I then I can't do this, you know. And I have to. This is the, this is why I'm here, you know. And and. Uh, yeah, so doing this really well every night makes the whole thing just so much more healthy mentally and physically and everything, yeah. Yeah, so you have, don't have some like typical London hangs you try and tend to while you're here. Do I? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Because, I mean, the hotels, you know, it's like... <laughs> Uh, Do they put you in good hotels for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've, 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 we've been at a variety of, of amazing hotels. I let, you know, it's like, it's, uh, yeah, I try to kind of like, when I'm on, on tour, I get into like a, like, a, 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 a mad men or succession sort of vibe where it's just like 
weird, great little environments and stuff like that. But it's always really lonely and depressing, like all those environments are in those shows. But it's like I, I kind of go into sort of a an odd dysto five star dystopian, you know, uh, <laughs> five world. Five star through, dystopia is a good, yeah, good album. A, <laughs> it's how I get through touring. I have learned many l weird little rituals of just staying, you know, getting healthy about it. You know. Yeah. But the, the show last night um, was incredible, and it felt like there was kind of a, a very different energy to, to previous national tours. I just wondered if you, were, if you were approaching these shows differently, if you felt. I don't, I mean, um, there, there's, the, the, it, feels, it feels all like the natural energy that we kind of always had live. We're a different live band than we are a studio band. And, um, but I, I, I do think, you know, there were so many years where no one was touring, we weren't touring, and, and, and we were, you know, writing from a non-touring place, and, and I was coming out of a long period where I just, I just dried up, and I was, you know, yeah. I was in a, I've talked a lot about that, but I was in a depression, I just couldn't, couldn't write, and that, that tri triggered a panic of never being able to, like, go back and do this thing, which is the thing I love to do, and it's, I'm better at it than anything else, you know, yeah. and, I, and I love to do it, and so when I couldn't do that, that was pretty terrifying, so, so, but, us, you know, slightly kind of climbing back into the studio together. That was even that was really hard for me, and then crafting some of those songs, which became the the this sort of first half of this double album. Is is the double album thing is really my the way I think of the whole yeah, yeah. The first two pages of Frankenstein and this new record laugh track. But yeah, the first one was like just kind of turning on the the plugging things in and turning on the switches a little bit, yeah. and, and and then. And then the 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 then we started touring and, and that energy of like the you know the, the the things heating up and my brain and heart and soul heating up and it, the whole band warming up that kind of infects the next record a lot so yeah the, the, it's it's been a funny thing so so we're kind of everything of these last two records we're we're trying to play almost all of it you know here and there sprinkled throughout the sets and. And all of them are feeling like it's suddenly with the whole the whole mechanism, the whole machine, the whole animal is is like the blood is flowing in all the parts of the brain and and, and machine, you know. Um, so uh, that feels really good and really healthy. And um, yeah, and it was a, it was kind of a slow process for us coming out of that really, you know, when everything shut down. Um, yeah. And so for everybody, it's been a, and for me especially, it took me a long time to to come out of it, but. Well, no, I remember because um, the, the last time we spoke um, was just as Serpentine Prison was about to come out. Um, I remember in the run-up to that, we had to do just as uh, at the end of the I Am Easy to Find run going into Serpentine Prison. At that point, you said you felt like Bradley Cooper in Limitless. So you were just firing on all cylinders. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I had a lot of things. I had a lot of really cool projects that were... Uh, I mean that stuff and, and, and a lot like uh, writing a lot of songs with a lot of different people I was we, we had been working on a musical with Peter Dinklage and and Erica Schmidt we were uh, and and my brother and wife and I were we're you know in development with a TV show yeah. all that kind of stuff uh, there were a lot of things a, a lot of things cooking right at that moment when COVID hit. And a funny part of it, it was like, I think I had way too many things going, you mm -hmm. know, and I, and, and uh, so in a weird way, I had to put, I had, a, I had a, so many, I had like I had a list of like seven big projects that I had cooking at the same time that I had to like call everyone I was involved with and all of them and say, I, it's not gonna happen, you know, yeah. at all. Uh, and I can't promise it'll come back because nobody knows. And, uh, you know, and so, but that was in a weird way. I think I had to like it was a it was a, a relief, and so for like the first year or so of that of the lockdown, the shutdown, I was in a really blissful place. You know, mm. of just like not worrying about finally just just chilling out, and I was I really happy to be home so long with my wife and my daughter and everything. And but then then it it caught up with me. It yeah. caught up with me and I and I suddenly when when we started the, the national we sort of we okay we have to start to think about how to get back out there and everything and I I couldn't start writing and I you know so the so Nick Cave always talks about there's this little flame, you know, yeah. it's, he's in many of the things that, uh, uh, that that's this, like, you're just trying to find that weird little flame that, that gets you excited about a, about anything emotional thing, whether it's a movie or, or a song or anything. And, um, 
and I couldn't find, it was like so long, I couldn't find it at all. You know, I was like, I could not find the flame. I couldn't light it. I couldn't, I could like wandering around and I just didn't know if it was ever coming back. So that was triggered a panic, you know? And so when we started finally putting songs together um, that ended up being first two pages of Frankenstein, it was just, that was like slowly the, that flicker started, that flicker, that, that candle, that little flame came back. Uh, yeah, and now I just keep, you know, I keep throwing <laughs> too much gasoline <laughs> on the whole thing and just trying to light the whole house up um, and keep it going for as long as possible, but, you know. Yeah, no, because I remember when we spoke about um, Serpentine Prison and we talked about the track O'Deary and the meaning of that lyric, paralysis has me. Yeah. And then I've seen you use that, that word a lot to describe that period. I mean, yeah. The Serpentine Prison record, there's so much foreshadowing of <laughs> what, what I was about to happen to me in yeah. that record. Um, and you know, and I was writing a lot of that stuff with a lot of the people I was writing with were a lot of the people that I was had been cooking the TV show with, like Walter Martin and and Matt Barrick from Walkman and Mike Brewer and uh, uh, and so so I was writing all these songs um, with people because I wanted the TV show to have a real band with a real catalog and stuff, and then when the TV show was on, you know, maybe not happening, we had to put it out. So there's all, all that kind of material, there's a, a bunch more of that kind of stuff, and so, but everything, I had to, you know, I had to put it all down, I had to walk away from everything, I had to call so many people and just say, like, I can't, you know, I can't do this anymore, just, I, I couldn't string people along anymore that I, if, if I wasn't sure they were gonna happen, gonna, any of these things were gonna happen. And I, you know, I felt like a need to put it all down because I think I was, I was burn out, you know? Yeah, because um, he must have never had that feeling of reawakening before, with like people being there for you and bringing, and, like that, the flame coming back. That must have felt like quite a profound sensation to go, oh shit, I can do this. This kind of level of like a long period of, of depression, or just like, just not being able to get excited about anything. And that was when I was 12, mm. you know? And I remembered, I was like, this is, this is as bad as it was when I was 12. And I kept trying to, I think, what is it? Like, what was going on when I was 12 that's so similar to what's going on now, you know? And I couldn't, I, there's nothing I could identify necessarily, but I remember that lasting for like a year. And it was, it was just, it was time mostly, you know, that I think just finally, and, and reconnecting and just getting back out there and, and really reconnecting with the band and just like, I, I think it was, it was, uh, I don't know, it felt like a real, a real physical, my, my body, did, everything needed to shut down for a while, yeah. you know, and reboot from nothing, and it, and it did, you know, and, and uh, but it was <laughs> it took a long time for that for that light to come back on, you know, and and uh, and it was a slow slow process of coming out of it, and and, and I, I I I you know adventured into various uh, antidepressants and and quit smoking uh, weed and and drinking alcohol for a while. Uh, None of that really helped, to be honest. You know, it's like it was, it was. The antidepressants like raised the floor a little bit when it was really bad, but it was. I got off of those pretty quick, and then having a, you know, smoking a joint and having having a, a glass of wine with the band, you know, while we're listening back to something that's kind of working was, was the 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 the, the way back to, to it. So, uh, or just you know. All of that. So um, yeah, I tried to re figure, reboot myself physically and mentally and everything, and kind of had to. I mean, there was it was it was, it was, it was everything kind of burned down. My brain burned to the burned to the ashes, and it was just kind of had to slowly rebuild it up, you know, somehow. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was it was sobering to realize how fragile. Uh, I was, I think that was the, the, like looking back, I was like, wow, I was sick as hell, you know, just like physically, it was, it was a whole physical thing, you know, and, and it was triggered by real things and mental things and whatever, but it was like, it was a physical, uh, para you know, total, total emotional, physical paralysis and stuff. So, um, I've learned to just respect it, you know, and, and, and respect how fragile, uh, everyone is. Yeah. But, you know, so was it a relief when Frankenstein was done and you could still see all your babies laid out and be like? Um, it was a relief that we were able to 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 to, to you know finish a record and yeah. then but then there were more there were more things happening but we had to we you know it was kind of like we had to put that record out because we had to tour because we had you know forty out of work people for many years at this point who were yeah. desperate we we were all desperate you know, we have to get this family and this 
this thing that we built back out there. We have to put the ship back out into the ocean, and and uh, and we needed to have a wreck, you know. So there was, it was in the first many shows. Even there's a this show we did in Bearsville, you know. I was I was you know barely able to sort of do do that kind of thing at that point, and the record was pretty it was done. Um, but it, yeah, it, it was still months before I, 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 you know, got back into sort of mental and, and, and whatever, emotional shape, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not in that great of physical shape, but I, you know, I'm, I'm in, I'm, everything else is, is I saw you sprint through more. the crowd last night, I had some moves. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> clamor. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't sprightly go over the barrier like I used to. No um, flips. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, thankfully, I have, I have helpful fans that like to, you know, drag me around and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. And, but everything, everything, the whole band feels really kind of everybody's having a having a great time, you know, yeah. and and feeling feeling great artistically, feeling great physically, live and everything, and and uh, we're kind of on a on a really I don't know, juicy phase or something. Juicy we just, phase you know, we keep th- keep writing and stuff. So I think we're gonna like we're gonna take our time and and just have fun with this, you know, and keep touring and keep writing and you know we don't have any massive uh, plan right now or, or direction. Yeah. We're just like yeah, yeah, we can kind of do whatever we want now. Um, I think everybody feels that so. Well, we spoke a few times in the past about how you'd use weed and wine as a, a crutch to get on stage and help you connect to the songs and shut everything uh-huh. off. But I was wondering, with this kind of newfound compulsion and sort of need for the national to exist, is like, do you connect differently to the songs and the band in the audience at the moment now that? I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I really, I mean, by, by playing all so many different songs every night and having so many different songs, it's every, every song. And I, I would always try to actually pay attention mostly to the song, not to the crowd, not to the, not to anything. Just, just try to pay attention to the song, remember the lyrics, and 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 try to actually connect to the lyrics. That that was the, I, that was. The, the most I could ever do, and I had to do that from the very first days, like because I was terrified to look at even if there are two people or one people, no, but it was like I, to, to make eye contact with the crowd would throw me off, and I would get so so. But I've I've kind of learned to take in the crowd, look at the crowd, and then I because I have you know a safety net if I have to go like Nick, I always refer to Nick Cave because he's my, my hero. But he's probably I, in one of these. Bunkers. He's probably gonna be. <laughs> He's my publicist. Hanging upside uh, down. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I mean, he, he need, when he runs over and he needs to look at his binder, he does that, you know, and it's like, it's great. So I, I kind of like, it, that, that all freed me to, to just really, really listen to the songs and enjoy the, the, the music or enjoy Brian and enjoy the crowd and enjoy the, my own lyrics, you know, and, 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 and um, yeah, so, um, yeah, and I smoke a little bit of weed and I, and I kind of sip a, a cocktail throughout the show, just, you know, and I, but, you know, Nothing before, nothing after. I'm kind of like, well, like, it's it's just a, it's just a little bit of um, you know grease grease on the track or something <laughs> for the for the for these shows and and uh, and uh, it's uh, I, I don't know, I've been having a great time. I've been I've been just I don't know connecting with all of it, the whole room, the whole pe- the, the front row, the back row, the you know the <laughs> the lighting guys and everybody. <laughs> you know, it all feels like. It's been fun to figure out how to make um, these big weird rooms. The whole thing is a playground, you yeah. know. Like I go out all the time, and, and not, I don't I don't body surf. I just it's fun to just see where the stairwells are, yeah. you know. <laughs> and I go out and I find closets, closets and exits, and and uh, just to see what's out there, you know. And then come back in, and <laughs> it's it's fun to wander through. And I stay. I keep a, a, a the the cord. I don't have a uh, a wireless mic. People always ask me, why, why don't you, you have a wireless light, wireless mic? And uh, the truth is, I just think they look stupid. Well, it didn't really take my head off last I, just, night. I don't know why <laughs> they look stupid to me. And uh, even though the, everybody getting strangled by this, my mic cord is is arguably much more uh, stupid looking. But um, yeah, no, I also just find my way back with it, you know. Yeah. Um, when you get a Britney Spears headset, is there a name for them? 
<laughs> yeah, no, I could get one of those. Those are cool. I, I have, I've often won it, like, just, just so I could kind of run around. But yeah, then I would have literally have nothing to do with my hands. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's taken me forever to figure out what to do with like a microphone without looking like Phil Donahue or yeah. something. You know, it's like um, it's one of those things. Like when you're on a dance floor without a drink in your hand, you're like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, I used to, I used to have a cigarette, a drink, and the microphone. Yeah. Like you know, just like I just had these, you know. <laughs> saying, you know, I, it was all three of them at the same time. Um, but yeah, now I've kind of, I, I don't know, I don't think about what my hands are doing as much. Um, I probably, maybe I should. So, so was Laugh Track always on the horizon or was it kind of born of this joy of being back on the road in many ways? It was always, I mean, there, there was, when we were writing, um, when we first started like writing and, 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 and I mean, Aaron and Bryce, uh, and those guys had all sent me lots and lots of music, you know, uh, and I had been sitting on it for at least a year, you know, yeah. more. That was that, and, and lot. So a lot of the things that are across both of these things are from that, from that long phase where they all were very prolific, and I was, I was, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even text myself, you know. It's like, and. Uh, we, I slowly, like all those, we started cooking around the same time and we just had a lot of them. Um, and so the first two pages of Frankenstein, are, are frankly, the first ones that were, that we thought, okay, I was like, okay, I, that one, those are done. You know, yeah. it's like, Weird Goodbyes was the first one. And we put that out, like the first time we, it's like that, one, that song's done. And they put it out just to, we were like, you know, it was like, finally, finally, there's, we finished a new song. And that was like, meant a lot to, to me. And then the rest of the rec, the, the, the songs in that were like, as they, as they, you know, they kind of all sort of started being finished. And there were like a lot of them, those first 11 or whatever. Um, I was like, we're like, okay, let's put it out, you know, and, and, and I, 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 I curated that. I kept a lot of stuff back. It was my idea to not put weird goodbyes in that batch and stuff. And yeah, but then the other ones um, all kept sort of growing. And then a few new things came up, you know, and so it was, but, but I definitely, these two records definitely feel um, one one phase, one one journey for us, you know, definitely for me, you know, yeah. and um, yeah, and I and I kind of you know dug into every single every little after not wanting to look or think or write about anything that I, that I had been going through for so long. Finally, I started writing about it all, and 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 I you know. I, I hope I don't write about depression for a while or all that kind of, because I feel like I, yeah, I, I kind of turned over every leaf and, and looked in every corner there, and and yeah, and it's and there's a lot on there, and but it all feels, feels it's very all very connected to me. For, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted them to both have this essentially the same cover and every all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, a lot's been said about people saying that kind of um, Frankenstein feels kind of like Zero Hour and Laugh Track feels a bit more kind of like rising from the ashes. Do you, do you think that's fair? Or is that just in the energy of it? Yeah, no, I think, I think, I think, I think um, Frankenstein, from Frankenstein to, it's not necessarily chronological, but like knowing how we made this batch of 20 something songs, you know, uh, and there's others that we just, that, that are, that, that there's, there are B-sides for all this stuff in, in, in different things that we, we did abandon. But uh, yeah, all of them very much are, feel like they are all, woven into a, 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 a big, you know, some sort of tapestry uh, for me. And it's not necessarily chronological, but, you know, just, I mean, just even the fact, you know, the, 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 my, you can hear my voice on so many of the songs that, you know, I was barely, you know, almost barely making any noise, you yeah. know, so like physically, physically you see the band sort of like kind of coming out of a, out of a long, you know, mutation or something, and, and you know, just just sprouting, sprouting slowly back to life. I think for sure. Yeah, I hear that across the whole record a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to ask about collaborators. So obviously, since um, I am easy to find, you've kind of been a bit more open to having other voices on, on the tracks. And I was just wondering what it was like to have these people like Taylor Swift, Phoebe Rudis, Rosanna Cash. What's it like to have them inhabit the songs with you? Is that? I mean, it's always. In, I mean, it's always incredible. There, there is. 
there are certain songs where, like the the one with Rose Cash, uh, is I just had always I was writing it, thinking about hopefully getting her on it, and I had been I had become friends with her, you know, a, a grateful connection with another way, and, and and she was one of these people that I did talk to, well, very few people I talked to in the middle of my my kind of shutdown period, and she was actually uh, she was very helpful in, in, in turning, like flicking that candle back on for me a couple, said a few things to me, but, so I couldn't wait to, once we were back, to bring her in on something, so that was very specific. And then with like Phoebe, it, like we had these three songs, um, including Laugh Track, which is on the new one, and I, I really wanted her to, her to I really heard her on Laugh Track, and and I just it needed that that voice of of my wife. My wife, you know, is was you know that that song's and you know asking somebody just to like tell me it's all going to be okay, yeah. you know, um, or at least fake it for me, you know, help me fake it, you know, and and that was that that I was needed my wife, you know, so that that song was kind of written, so it needed that that that, that just comforting, uh, comforting, somehow. The, 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 something about the, the gentleness of, of Phoebe's delivery of like sometimes ungentle thoughts or, yeah. or awkward thoughts was going to be perfect for that. And Aaron really uh, wanted to see what she would do with with um, my mind is your mind is not your friend, and uh, this isn't helping. And and uh, and she just sang on all of them, you know. And so we can't really but which ones, but. Uh, just what do you do with all those riches of beautiful voices? And then the Taylor thing was super organic, and 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 because um, Aaron had 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 we'd known her for a long time, and Aaron obviously had been doing so much amazing stuff with her. And uh, I wrote uh, the song "The Alcott again with Corinne in mind, you mm -hmm. know, the writing in the book notebook and stuff, and then. Aaron sent it to Taylor, and then she kind of added this other perspective on it, and, and wrote all her parts to it. So that was different. Where it was like she, a true duet, where where, where she heard that and kind of like inhabited the character um, that I was singing about, which is almost always Corinne. You know, it's yeah. like, uh, and so that was that was amazing to, to for that to work. So all those things have been, and Justin and 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 Sufjan and everybody, Lisa Hannigan, who we are, we work with, and we've had uh, so many people um, who've just we've been just so lucky that that they they dive in and and you know that kind of thing. So I don't know, you know, it's not really a a strategic game. Of course, we yeah. we, we we knew that like oh, Taylor Swift. I mean, Aaron's work, Taylor Swift, is going to bring a different kind of. Uh, um, whatever uh, spotlight or something, I, I can't yeah. even know. But uh, but it's it's been fun. It's been yeah. cool. I love it. You know, it's like um, yeah. I, all, all that thing is all of, all of that has been a really healthy branching of out of for everybody doing all these different things and um, yeah. Any surprises that have come with that spotlight of being brought into the Taylor Swift orbit or has life not no bad surprises? No, like, <laughs> really good. Again, we're getting a lot of friendship bracelets. I, I mean, honestly, I, I do think. Um, I think the biggest thing I know that I I what I see Taylor Swift is her her incredible generosity to her fans and people who love her. She like and she makes such a joyous event and a fun event. I was up till midnight with my daughter and her friends waiting for midnights and and all that stuff makes she 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 makes a, 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 an absolute. Uh, event out of out of out of out of a record, out of a work of art, and like who 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 that hardly ever happens anymore. Like the Beatles would pull that off. I just it's, it, I, I, I'm 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 absolutely in awe of her of her ability to just just bring so much excitement and joy uh, to so many people, and I, it's in my home, you know, <laughs> and I, I love it. And so uh, yeah, I think that, so. The national like part of our our commitment to like putting on great shows, I think is. It's like, yeah, that's what really matters. The whole thing, these, these, you know, these nights, these moments you spend with strangers singing together, and like how magical and, and strange and, and 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 incredible that is. Yeah. Yeah. And you describe the era of these two records as um, shedding a skin. So I just wondered if 
Does that mean end of a chapter? Do you imagine, have you thought about what comes next? I think so. I mean, I think it feels like with I'm Easy to Find, um, we're working with Mike Mills and, and, and kind of, you know, working with so many other voices, particularly because it called for that, because it was a story about a woman and her, her mother and all these, it needed other voices. Um, literally, you know, my, my wife was writing a lot on that too. And then, and so that kind of, you know, we've, we've gone through a long phase of like having, working with a lot of other singers, a lot of voices and stuff like that. And uh, I do feel like the, these three records, I'm Easy to Find, th through Laugh Track, Frankenstein and Laugh Track are, are kind of, they, they, they feel all, um, even though there was a big separation in the middle, they seem artistically very connected, but I do, I do feel we were kind of like done with those branches, yeah. a lot of those branches, you know, I think it's time to, you know, to, to grow out the other side of the tree, you know, and whatever that means, yeah. yeah. Brian told me he wanted you guys to make a full-on punk record in the style of pirates. Everybody says that, you know, <laughs> I, I, and like, I, I would love to, I mean, honestly, it's like, if I can't, if I'm not in a mode where I can like write, I mean, those guys send me stuff that's rock songs all the time, but like, I have to be there. I can't fake that. Yeah. I can't fake a rock song. Everybody can like, can hear a fake rock song from, you know, that's like, it just sounds so pathetic and effortful. And, and uh, so I can't do that. I can't fake it. I got to actually be in the zone and feeling it. And, um, and uh, yeah, and so, you know, that started to happen more. But like when I was, you know, when I was in the phase, of the little, I'm, I, I wasn't angry at anything. You yeah. know, I couldn't muster the energy. I was, you know, I could, I could, um, I, I couldn't raise my voice above a whisper. Like, I mean, there are even songs that are like aggressive, musically, sonically aggressive, where I'm just like mumbling, you know? And, <laughs> and uh, cause that, that it, you know, um, I can't go in, I don't like warm my voice up and go in and try to build out a, a hit rocker. You know, it's like, it's impossible, I can't do it. I don't yeah. know. Um, so uh, the, everything has to just be organic with us. Yeah, which, which is, Thank God, you know, yeah. <laughs> if I, I, I wouldn't know how to start if I had to cook up a song, um, you know, from a, from a strategic recipe perspective, you know, yeah. in terms of like career arc or, you know, anything like that. I just, it's whatever's going on, I have to write that, you know. And in that spirit, is the sitcom still coming or is that? It's not unlike uh, Frankenstein. It is, it is uh, had a, a jolt of a, a lightning bolt that <laughs> started its heart again. Um, no, it's a really good, it's a really great show. Um, and we kind of had to put the, with the, with the, with the uh, it's called Das Apes. And, uh, and, and with the pandemic, we had to put it down because I was, but um, yeah, Das Apes is alive. And that's all I can say. But I don't, I, I just want to say, it's like, it's like, TV show, like there was nothing to happen because of the writer strikes and stuff like that, but, but we'll see. Um, um, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna drown in projects like I was before, you know, I'm gonna yeah. make sure I uh, only take on the things that, are, that I can really, really do. Um, but that is one of them that I really wanna do still, and that, that might happen, so. Is it still autobiographical or? It's t a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of details from autobiographical thing, but not just mine, also like, you know, Walt Martin and, and Matt Barrick um, from Walkman have, have all kinds of stories. And also the, the, the story of the band, it's only like one part of it. Tom, my brother is, it was, you know, would uh, essentially is the hero of it and everything. And, and, uh, and, and Tom and I play each ourselves, but, uh, my wife isn't even, you know, so that's all, you know, I don't want to, um, but it's the whole chemistry and the, and the sort of DNA of the show is, is very different than, than, than anything um, I think that exists and it's really cool and I really like it and it's, and it's joyful and it's, it's, you know, it's, I guess it's, it's a funny show, but it's, it's, you know, Mistaken for Strangers, the doc that, that, that Corinne and Tom and I made, you know, captures the spirit of this television show, but it's not going to be like a fake doc or anything yeah. like that. So um, anyway, yeah, I don't know. It, it might not be anything. It might just be on our laptops, you know, <laughs> forever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, who knows? Well, fingers crossed. Looking forward to it. Matt, yeah. thank you for joining us Thanks, in our five-star dystopia. Yeah.